Hi, my name is Julie and I am the animal care manager here at Naples Zoo. And even though the zoo might be closed, we are still trying to keep everything as normal as possible for our animals here at the zoo. So today I thought that we would give you a look at what some of our parrots, in particular our macaws, are doing um, with their day today. So I have with me Charlie and Brandy and they are blue and gold macaws. And Charlie is about 16 years old and Brandy is about 33. And you might think that, oh, that sounds pretty old, but these guys can actually live a pretty long time. They can sometimes live to be 80 to 100 years old. So they still have a long way to go yet. So a normal day out here for a parrot is to come out on exhibit and do lots of chewing on their branches, getting some sunlight. And also you may notice kind of a, a weird paper puff hanging in the background. And this is something that we call enrichment. So all of our animals here at the zoo get enrichment every day. And it's basically something that's going to bring out one of their natural behaviors. And with a parrot, one of their big natural behaviors is they love to chew on things. So we might give them paper puffs to pull at and shred and destroy, old phone books to destroy, boxes to chew up, and or even um, pine cones to chew on as well. Now with these guys and enrichment, they also, if you think about what a parrot would do, they would also see a lot of different things in their day. They would hear different things. Uh, they don't have the greatest sense of smell um, that we know of, but um, we still offer that, that the option, but maybe not as much of our other animals. So for sight, we might bring them out a mirror to look at as well. Um, or it could be bath time. We could set up the hose or a sprinkler and let them enjoy a nice bath in the afternoon. So those are all different things we can give our parrots to do. And then on top of that, they also enjoy one of parrots' favorite activities is eating. And so what we feed our parrots here every day is lots of fruits and vegetables. Um, some of their favorites are grapes, bananas, apples, sweet potato, and especially corn as well. And that's what they get for their breakfast. Then throughout the rest of the day, we also give them um, a pelleted diet that's made especially for parrots that has all the nutrition that they need. Now, as you're seeing right here, they also get lots of treats throughout the day and parrots love seeds and nuts. That's something they would eat in their natural environment. So they are getting a whole walnut right now. And you can see that they are taking no time at all to use that strong beak to crunch right through to get that walnut that's inside. And you can also see that they're kind of messy eaters and they tend to drop a lot of things on the ground as well. So, with enrichment as well, we can give them different food items to um, kind of give them something different to taste. Um, some of our parrots actually really like cooked pasta that we might give them um, or a peanut butter sandwich. And with enrichment, this is something you guys can do at home as well. I'm sure a lot of you guys have pets at home. It a dog or a cat or even a guinea pig and all of them think about what might be a natural behavior for that animal your dog might like to run to jump to dig your cat might like to swat at things so that's an activity you guys can do at home is to make an enrichment item for one of your pets at home and see how they interact with it and respond to it could be something fun to fill up your day and with these guys eating these nuts here, again, that is something they would naturally eat in their environment. And they use that strong beak to crack open those nuts. If this animal were in your home, they would also use any of your furniture to practice chewing with that strong beak on as well. And if they were in your home, another favorite activity of a parrot is to scream as loud as they can at random times throughout the day. They also enjoy making a mess with their food and pretty much pooping wherever they'd like. So if you have one of these guys in your house, those are some things to consider before you bring one in. But the good thing is if you don't want to have a bird directly in your house, you can go outdoors and enjoy one of the many 10,000 species of birds that we have in the world. So as a suggestion as well is to go outside, walk around your yard, maybe put up a bird bath. 
build an owl box while you have some time, put that up in your yard, see what birds you can attract to your backyard and take a look at them and try to figure out how many species you might be able to count and find that live around your own home. We do have a question okay. from Genesis. Is there a fruit that they're not able to eat or anything that's not good for them? Is there a fruit that they're not able to eat is a question that, that, that came in. There are some things that are toxic to birds um, when it comes to food. The first one that I can think of off the top of my head is avocado. Um, that has shown to have toxic properties as well as um, cherry pits and we tend to not give them apple seeds either um, because there is some suggestions of having cyanide in apple seeds so we do have to really watch exactly what we can give our birds food wise um, but that's just through doing research and knowing what they need and what they can and can't have awesome we do have another question how do they stay put how do they stay here this is a question we get a lot from our guests that come to the zoo and we do trim some of their wing feathers and they tend they can still fly with having some of their wings trimmed they might just be able to fly up into one of our big trees we have here at the zoo but they wouldn't be able to take off and go to fort myers um, so we do that kind of for their safety because they are out in the open if they get spooked by something a loud noise a, a plane or a helicopter suddenly comes over a bird's natural instinct is to take off and fly and hide for safety. So um, because we take care of all their needs here, they don't necessarily know how to interact in the world by themselves. So we definitely don't want them going too far away that we can't still take care of them. Um, but because of that as well, they tend to know and are pretty comfortable here. This is where they get all their toys, all their treats, all their food and spend most of their time. So this is kind of their comfort spot. So unless something spooks them and scares them, they tend to want to stay right here as it is. We have a viewer who just turned in and wants to know what are their names? Their names, these two right behind me here, the blue and gold macaws are Charlie and Brandy. And by looking at them, you might not be able to tell them apart, um, but us working with these guys every day, we definitely know the slight differences of their coloration and of their personalities as well. Brandy's the one that's there dancing up and down and she definitely has a very much stronger personality and clown-like personality than Charlie. Charlie's a little more mellow. Um, someone wants to know, can you talk about the plight of macaws and the dangers of the exotic pet trade? Yes, um, the plight of macaws and dangers of the exotic pet trade. It is definitely a big issue in the world of birds being taken from their natural habitats in extreme numbers. And I know just recently African greys got put on that list because they were being taken for the exotic pet trade at really high numbers and their numbers in the wild were just dwindling down at such a high rate. And so that is something unfortunately that still continues even though there are laws against it. Um, there are, I, I don't want you guys to do searches on the internet for this because some of the pictures can be horrible of the ways these birds are smuggled, um, especially from Mexico into the United States, um, in smashed under trunks of cars, in wheel wells, in plastic bottles, so they can't make noises. Um, all very uh, sad instances of how these birds are brought in. And But unfortunately, there is still kind of a demand for these guys as pets. And so until there's no demand, people are still gonna be continuing to take them from their natural habitats. And definitely um, pet trade is a big one that does go after many parrot species, um, but also habitat loss. So anything you can do to help out um, the trees and their natural environment can help these parrots in their, in their environment as well. Um, there is something, a little label, that you can look at on any paper product, a cardboard or paper, <laughs> that look for this little label that says FSC. That means that those paper products are, um, those trees are taken in a sustainable way to still give us the paper products that we need, but keep the environments around for the birds as well. Is there anything that people can do at home, like? coffee or anything that people at home can do to help save? Anything people can do at home to help save birds in general and macaws, 
Again, that FSC label on any paper products means you're supporting good ways um, for, to keep this environment around. Um, maybe steering clear of getting one as a pet. Also, there's something out there called bird-friendly coffee. So there's a lot of coffee drinkers out there, I know. And there is specifically something that is certified bird-friendly that when you buy that brand of coffee or that type of coffee, it ensures that we can still get the coffee that we want, but it keeps a lot of the trees and environment intact for these birds as well. Now, a lot of places um, don't carry them. There's a few that are just starting to carry that. But the next time you do go buy coffee, you could always ask your company that you get it from, do you have a bird friendly brand? They might not, but that's okay. But the more people that start asking for it, the more these companies might put it on their shelves if they know people are actually gonna buy it. Yes, we have a question. Um, there seems to be a lot of other birds that fly into their area. <laughs> do they um, ever try to keep away from them or do they tolerate them? How does that work? Um, they normally pretty get along with them pretty well, almost too well because we tend to sometimes have to give them double the food because we know the wild birds come and steal some of their food items out here. So we're doing our part for the wild birds, I guess, as well here. And oftentimes they will just sit right next to them. They don't chase them away sometimes if they go to steal their normal food. If it's something really good the parrots like, then they'll go and chase them away. But we do have some grackles, some doves that come over and hang out with them as well. Um, and usually they, they get along pretty well for the most part out here. They... And uh, one other question from a viewer who just turned in, um, enrichment again, what other kinds of enrichment do they get? Uh, what other kinds of enrichment do they get? When we focus on chewing, that is anything, tearing up paper, tearing up boxes, um, giving them little bamboo wind chimes and stick wind chimes that just crunch through those sticks and bamboo. Um, we also give them colorful wood blocks that they can destroy. Um, we'll use, all of us will bring in our old cereal boxes and our old toilet paper and paper towel rolls and we can paint them different colors. We can put popsicle sticks in the little tubes and add some honey to the popsicle sticks, put little nuts on those popsicle sticks so it's something they can see, something they can taste and forage around to find their treats also something they can then chew on when they're done as well. It kind of um, accomplishes a lot there. We can also play the music, give them baths. Um, we can hide their treats in piles of leaves and they have to search through those leaves to get them. We can uh, put up mirrors for them to kind of look at another bird as well. Um, so the, the list is kind of endless of what our keepers here come up with to give these guys. Uh, next question, can they talk? They do talk. Um, they definitely can when they want to. Ours here, it's something we don't really work on with putting it on a cue of meaning that when we ask them to say a certain word, they do. They usually tend to repeat the words that they hear quite often. Things like their names, hi, hello, um, step up. Um, we do have one of our parrots here does talk way more than our macaws do. And he will actually say not only say a lot of words but he says them in the exact voice of that person that he picked up that word from so it's actually kind of creepy at times where nobody's around but you think one of your co-workers is behind you and you turn around they're not there and it was just one of our parrots actually mimicking their voice perfectly so um but they do say different words when they feel like it and avery wants to know how sharp are their beaks how sharp are their beaks um as far as sharp like a knife, they're not extremely sharp in that manner, but they're extremely strong of when they crunch down on something. Um, it's said that some parrot species have about 1,500 pounds per square inch of pressure in that beak of theirs, which to kind of, if you don't know what that means, put it in perspective, they could snap a broomstick in half if they wanted to um, by the power that they have in that beak. So that's what, again why it's super important we give these guys stuff to chew on all the time to keep their beak nice and strong. And it is that way because their natural environment, they use it a lot to crunch through strong seeds and nuts they find as well to help them climb around the trees. Um, you notice they use their feet a lot to help them eat with or move around. And so they can use that beak like another, another foot to help them climb through their environment as well. 
And Haley wants to know, why do they dance? <laughs> why do they dance? Um, although parrots do have a lot of the bad points to them to have in your home with being loud and chewing on everything, they can be quite clowns and can be fun for hours to watch. Um, they have the mentality of about a two to three year old. So if you think about a two, two to three year old, they will purposely try to do things to see what kind of reaction they get out of you. Um, things that they might do just to try to get attention from you. And the parrots are the same way. So all this kind of dancing up and down is kind of like, hey, pay attention to me. Look, I'm doing something. Look how funny I am. Laugh at me. Things of that nature. <laughs> And another student, Brooks, wants to know how and why do they use their beak like a foot, like another foot? How and why do they use their beak like another foot? So for climbing through their environment, they will use their beak to help them climb. Now you might think it's a bird. They should just be able to fly from place to place. But flying takes up a lot of energy. So oftentimes if a bird finds a tree that has a lot of fruit in it, they would, it's a lot easier and um, saves their energy just to climb from branch to branch to bite off all the fruit pieces that they find instead of flying. So having that beak as another hand can help them definitely if you're up in a tall treetop to climb from place to place. Oh, if you're wondering who that was, <laughs> that was Miss Bonnie over here. <laughs> Bonnie is a different type of macaw. And all these guys are found in different parts of South America. Bonnie is a military macaw. And Bonnie is about um, 23 years old. Brooks, who you just answered his question, says, yeah, sometimes I'm tired too. <laughs> All right, well, again, you guys, if you are looking for things to do, go take a walk out in your backyard and see how many bird species you can find and keep checking in back in with us here at Naples Zoo and we're gonna give you updates on what our, all of our animals are doing here at the zoo during this time as well.